now today we are going to discuss the force of friction when a small horizontal force is applied to some heavy mass we know it will not move as per second law net force is equal to mass into acceleration as per second law body should move now <coughs> First law says body can remain motionless only if the net force is zero. So that means some force equal in magnitude and opposite in direction is acting on the body. This force is called frictional force. This force cannot be more or less than the applied force because in either case there will be a net force and body will move. This force has a certain maximum value. When the applied external force exceeds the maximum value of frictional force, body begins to move with a net force equal to difference of the two forces mentioned above. Frictional force is therefore a force which opposes relative motion. Frictional force has a maximum value equal to the coefficient of friction multiplied by the normal reaction as long as body is not moving mu is called coefficient of static friction and once the body starts moving magnitude of mu decreases a little and is called coefficient of kinetic friction it's the frictional force that causes a motion of vehicle the frictional force between the road and the tires Now we take a problem to understand the concept. Suppose a mass m1 10 kg is lying on a plank of mass m2 10 meter in length. M2 is accelerating at the rate of 6 meter per second square by a unidirectional force towards left. Frictional coefficient between m1 and m2 is suppose 0.5 and between m2 and ground is 0. Now how long it will take for the box to reach the other end of the plank let's find out First suppose that there is no friction between m1 and m2 what will happen as per first law net force on m1 will be zero in horizontal direction and m1 will remain where it is while m2 will slip to the left due to force of friction between m1 and m2 m1 will move along with m2 towards left the maximum value of frictional force between m1 and m2 is mu n which is equal to 50 newton so as per newton's second law net force equal to mass into acceleration so we find the acceleration maximum possible acceleration for mass m1 equal to 5 meter per second square maximum force of friction can support acceleration of 5 meter per second square so we see that acceleration of m1 is less than that of m2 so we see that to accelerate m1 with m2 this friction force is insufficient so mass m1 will be lagging behind m2 since its acceleration is less by 1 meter per second square towards left both m1 and m2 are moving to left but m2 is moving faster to left than m1 so as seen from the surface of plank m1 will appear to be moving to the right end of the plank so with respect to m2 m1 is moving to right so to prevent relative motion friction force acts to left on mass m1 m1 is having an acceleration of 1 meter per second square relative to m2 or as seen from m2 towards right all the both are moving to left but as seen from m2 m1 is moving to right acceleration of plank m2 is 6 meter per second square to left and acceleration of m1 is 5 meter per second square also towards left in the frame of plank m2 acceleration of m1 with respect to m2 or as seen from m2 
equal to acceleration of m1 minus acceleration of m2 which is equal to 1 meter per second square towards right. Now m1 has to cover a distance of 10 meter with a relative acceleration of 1 meter per second square to right with relative with zero relative initial velocity because initial velocity of both the masses is same so relative velocity will be zero so using the equation s equal to ut plus 1 by 2 at square we find the time now we take another example to explain this mass m equal to 1 kg is given initial velocity of 5 meter per second down the plane with 30 degree slope it will travel some distance and will stop here three forces are acting on mass first weight mg acting vertically downward has been resolved along the slope and perpendicular to the slope as shown in the figure second is the normal reaction which is perpendicular to the surface now when the mass pushes the surface downward as per third law surface pushes the mass upward although direction of normal reaction is fixed but magnitude is variable as already explained in the example on laws of motion third force is force of friction which is parallel to the surface but up the plane up the slope Friction being a self-adjusting force being equal and opposite to the applied force can have a maximum value of mu n. Since the body is moving, limiting friction mu n will act opposing the relative motion between mass and surface. Now resolving the forces along the surface, positive x-axis down the plane and positive y-axis perpendicular to the surface upward. Along y-axis, n minus mg cos theta equals 0 so n equal to 8.6 newtons component of mg along positive x axis is mg sin theta equal to 5 newton and force of friction mu n equal to 6 newton is along negative x axis so net force of 1 newton is along negative x axis or up the plane so Acceleration of mass along x-axis as per second law, net force equal to mass into acceleration. Acceleration along chosen positive x-axis is negative. So retarding force will retard the motion of mass and bring it to stop after traveling some distance. So force equal to mass into acceleration, force is minus 1 newton and mass is 1 kg so we have acceleration of minus 1 meter per second square along positive x-axis so using the equation v square minus u square equal to 2 as we find the mass will stop after traveling a distance of 12.5 12, 12 meter down the plane